Well, it's the weekend, and it's time to go check in with Michael Snyder and take a look at what's happening in the films this weekend. Hi, Michael. Uh, howdy, Alex, and greetings from uh, Los Angeles, California, where uh, the weather is steamy, and, uh, you know, the, the opportunities to enjoy the entertainment capital are myriad, and we've got a bunch of films opening, including um, a film version of what I believe is a uh, long-running TV property that's been rejiggered, I uh, use the word that uh, that I just used properly, I hope, uh, for Denzel Washington, um, who is the star of this crime thriller, which is about a mysterious man who seeks a quiet life, but can't help getting involved when people are in trouble. And a young girl's life is threatened in this one, and, uh, and Denzel's character uh, comes to the fore. Uh, he plays Robert McCall, who I believe is, in all probability, a former black ops agent. He knows how to take care of himself and others, but again, he wants to keep his own counsel because he's got a little tragedy in his life. Uh, I have to say that uh, this is our first chance to see young actress Chloe Grace Moretz, a.k.a. Carrie, a hit girl and that little vampire kid from Let Me In, playing a hooker. And I'm so thrilled that our little girl is growing up. In any case, this is actually a lot of fun. It's, it's uh, directed by Ant- uh, Antoine Fuqua, who did Training Day with uh, our pal, uh, Mr. Washington, and uh, this is not a movie as good as Training Day, not as serious either. It's pure fun. Reminded me a little bit of the Liam Neeson action movies. Like Denzel said, I want a piece of this, and uh, you know he did it in Man on Fire, and now he's doing it again in The Equalizer. A lot of fun, a B-movie that gets a B-plus from me. Also, uh, Bill Pullman and Melissa Leo show up in this film. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, the Box Trolls is a wonderful and inventive and beautifully rendered um, animated film from the guys at Leica, who made, among other things, uh, Paranorman and uh, Coraline. And, uh, the stop motion is, is really a trip, I have to tell you. It's something uh, to conjure with when it's done right. In this case, beautifully. Uh, the, the box trolls, essentially, uh, are these lovable, scavenging, tinkering trolls who live beneath a Baroque cheese-loving town that looks sort of Princess Bride meets Prague on a pointy peak, and a human baby ends up being raised by these guys, and the kid grows up thinking he's a box troll until the local box troll exterminators ramp up a purge so their leader can be elevated in local society and get into the sacrosanct cheese tasting room. This is some beautiful stuff uh, developed from a book and featuring voice work from Ben Kingsley as the villain, uh, Tony Collette, uh, L. Fanning, Jared Harris as the sort of smug aristocrat, Simon Pegg, Nick Frost. They didn't really skimp at all in this film, and it's not quite as uh, enthralling as Caroline, but I did think The Box Trolls was a wonderful family film that I think people will really get a kick out of, the uh, adults and the kids. Two Faces of January. Wow, if you're a fan of film noir and suspense, uh, director-screenwriter Hossein Amini has come up with an adaptation of a novel by Patricia Highsmith, who did the talented Mr. Ripley, and this is just fantastic. Set in exotic Greece in Istanbul during 1962, uh, it brings together a couple of wealthy American tourists, played by Viggo Mortensen and Kirsten Dunst, and a crafty uh, expatriate American tour guide, kind of a slime ball, played by Oscar Isaac, who um, was very impressive uh, in Inside Lewin Davis, and he's impressive here, too. They uh, initially encounter one another, and then there are sub- subsequent relations and a very, very unfortunate occurrence that results in serious consequences. And, man, uh, this was first-rate stuff. I, the two faces of January, can't say how much I loved it um, without superlatives, and um, it's, it's, it's as smart and satisfying a thriller as I've seen in a long time. I love the setting. I loved everything about it. So uh, The Two Faces of January, it's a big recommendation for me, as does Pride. Pride is a docudramedy, for one of a better way to explain it, uh, which you could favorably compare to such films as Made in Dagenham and The Full Monty. And in this film, UK gay activists work to help minors during the strike of the National Union of Mine Workers in the summer of 1984. So this is uh, under Margaret Thatcher, who was trying to bust the unions, and uh, some gay activists 
feel a kinship with the way the cops have been beating on the mine workers. They decide they're going to stand up and show solidarity. And it's a it's a true story. It's beautifully performed and executed. It's never treacly. It's never uh, overly sentimental. And uh, again, uh, what a terrific cast, including Bill Nye, uh, Imelda Staunton, Dominic West. Dominic West, like you've never seen him, the guy from The Wire and The Hour and other films. Um, uh, Patty Considine, Andrew Scott, the guy who plays Moriarty in the Sherlock films. He's in this thing. Joe, uh, Joe Gilgan from Misfits. I mean, it's a terrific cast, and it's so well done. Uh, Matthew Warkus is the director, and Pride is a, a wonderful film. That it'll, it'll read well on video, too, big time. A little disappointing was Two Night Stand, a romantic comedy about two people who make an online connection and are forced by a snowstorm uh, in New York to unwillingly extend their one-night stand. Uh, young Miles Teller, uh, the, uh, the, the second coming of John Cusack, plays opposite Annalee Tipton, uh, exceedingly adorable. I liked it. It was sweet. It wasn't too obnoxious. Not a great film, uh, but the stars sold it. A little film that uh, has a lot more in common with realness in terms of relationship than much of what we see in romantic comedies. And then the ending kind of lets you down. Still, Two Night Stand, it, it's okay. And it'll uh, also work well on video. Uh, finally, Lilting is um, a sweet, sad, uh, ephemeral film about a, a Cambodian Chinese mom whose son has died and she hasn't accepted the fact that her son is gay and his lover tries to connect with her. And the lover's played by Ben Wishaw from uh, the Bond films. He plays Q these days and uh, The Hour and other uh, great um, efforts on his part. And uh, it, it, it's sweet and a little, but, you know, it, it has a certain charm to it for sure. Uh, they did not let me see or tell me about a screening of Jimmy All Is By My Side, a Jimi Hendrix biopic that uh, apparently is the work of director-writer John Ridley, who did 12 Years a Slave. I hope to catch up to it. Uh, Andre Benjamin plays Hendrix. It's supposed to be good, and I don't know how they screwed up the way they did. Uh, anything in video, Mr. Bennett? No. <laughs> Plain and simple. A lot of no. new stuff is coming out. Come on. Come on. Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. came back with a bang. Yeah, but I'm, I don't have to report on that. I've ta- you know, we know that's been out before. Yeah. Sure. But, oh, I guess new and exciting stuff. No, uh, no there's things. nothing new and exciting. What did you think of Gotham? Did you watch that at all? Yeah, I saw it months ago. Yeah. Months ago, and has it worn well since that first viewing? Uh, it was, it was, it's okay. I like it. It's it's fine. You know, I'm I'm getting a little tired well, of all this comic book stuff. You know. No, I have Batman fatigue. I mean, there have been so many iterations of Batman. Here comes another one in uh, Batman. I have Marvel Superman fatigue. You know, I have DC fatigue. I mean, the only yeah. good, the only really good DC show is uh, is Arrow, in my opinion. So, you know. Well, I like the uh, pilot for the Flash too, which is coming out along those lines. Mm-hmm. And this, so we'll see about that. I was uh, Gotham. I did watch, and I was. Yeah. I thought, oh, there's an awful lot of fan service here. They're trying to shoehorn young versions of the villains into this thing. But, okay. You know, we'll we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Anyway, is that it's about it? I guess. Huh? Yeah. Check uh, check me out at uh, Twitter at Culture Blaster and at the Michael Snyder's Culture Blast uh, page on Facebook. And you can hear these uh, episodes on uh, the Great American Broadcast Net, of course. And you can also find them on YouTube at the dedicated channel. Thank you very much, Michael. We'll see you next week. Yes, sir. 